do your visuals tell the truth? Visual media have become a central element in business communication, and all business professionals have a responsibility to apply ethical decision making to the visuals they create. Whether it's a simple bar graph, a photo, a technical diagram, or the design of a web page. To assess the ethics of your visuals, you can apply two tests. The first ethical test involves the intent of your visuals. You can think of intention at four levels. If your intent is to be completely objective, you present your information in visual form with no attempt to persuade audiences to reach a particular conclusion. If your intent is to be persuasive, you can make a compelling and positive case for your argument, proposal, or product, and still do so in an ethical way if you give audiences all the information they need to make an informed decision. If you don't make the effort to create clear and unambiguous visuals that won't mislead the audience, this could be viewed as unethical intent. And lastly, if your intent is to deceive, the visuals are clearly unethical, which is a choice that responsible business professionals never make. The second ethical test is the effect your visuals have on your target readers or viewers. Even if your intent is ethical, you can still mislead audiences through design mistakes or a poor understanding of what the audience needs. This test is more difficult to assess than the first test because you can't always be sure of the effect your visuals have on the audience. However, if you have a clear assessment of your audience members and their information needs, you'll find it easier to craft your visuals that provide the information in a straightforward and honest way. Here's a simple example of how the design choices you make have ethical implications. Assume we're measuring a business parameter, such as warranty claims. A company would typically have two goals related to warranty claims, to minimize the overall level and to minimize the variance from month to month. Which of these three companies performed the best over the past year? Okay, it was a trick question. It's the same company and the exact same data in all three graphs. The only differences are the choices that were made when the graphs were created. Let's compare two of the graphs we just looked at. On the left, the vertical axis is scaled from 88 to 104, which zooms in on the data and emphasizes the monthly variance in the data set. In contrast, the graph on the right is scaled from 0 to 110, which has the opposite effect. Again, it's the exact same data in both graphs, but the conclusions that audience members are likely to reach are quite different. If readers don't take the time to confirm the scaling, they might conclude that the company on the left is wildly erratic, with great performance some months and fair to terrible performance on others. And they might conclude that the company on the right performs consistently pretty poorly, but at least it is stable. Is one presentation more accurate or more truthful than the other? As with every question of communication ethics, it depends on what the audience needs to know in order to make an informed decision. If executives reading these graphs are concerned primarily with the overall level of performance, the graph on the right emphasizes how far the performance is from the ideal of zero. On the other hand, if their primary concern is smoothing out month-to-month -month variability, the graph on the left emphasizes this phenomenon more dramatically. Whatever the situation is, make these decisions mindfully and in response to audience needs. For example, you might be tempted to use the scaling shown in the left graph because you think this makes the graph look more attractive or easier to read. However, this might not be the most ethical solution from the audience's perspective. Now, let's look at another common issue with charts and graphs. As before, these two graphs show the same data, but the graph on the right makes the situation appear better at first glance because the values are lower and therefore closer to the ideal of zero. However, that perception is purely the result of manipulating the vertical axis. Notice how the axis on the left starts at zero, 
but the axis on the right starts at 40. This offset has the effect of making the data points appear closer to zero, when in fact they are no closer than in the graph on the left. This question of offsets can arise whenever you have data values that start well above zero. To make the best choice for every graph, consider the two ethical tests. What is your intent? And what effect will the choice have on the audience? There are times when it is in the audience's interest to start the vertical axis somewhere other than zero, such as when variations among the data points are more important than the absolute values. However, in cases such as these, make sure to note that the axis doesn't start at zero, either with a label on the graph or in the caption. To make sure your visuals passed the test of ethical communication, follow this checklist. Consider all possible interpretations and misinterpretations. Provide context to avoid misunderstanding. Don't minimize information that refutes your argument or exaggerate information that supports your argument. Don't oversimplify complex situations.